Carolina people's going to school this morning, and it could be worth a fortune. What's it all about? You'll find out coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the South Carolina Employment Security Commission's Coastal Workforce Center on Victory Lane and Conway, serving the entire Grand Strand. We're focused on a, a recently launched personal coaching program for real estate professionals. And we're visiting with the chairman of the board of the Fortune Academy, Harold Swanner. Good morning, Harold. It's great to be here, Greg. Thank you so much for coming in. I think last time we were together, we were at the uh, Herald Studios. Uh, we we're talking a lot of Herald today, the yes. Herald Studios on the former Myrtle Beach Air Force Base. And I think you brought uh, Santi uh, Jim and Conkle with you, which was tremendous. Your friend from Santino's uh, Pizza. Yes. Which was wonderful. Yes, he still had the dinner room last night. Did you really? Yes. Is he doing well? Extremely well. His uh, pizza places are everywhere. I'm trying to get him out of the pizza business into the real estate business. Is that right? Yes. Into the real estate business? Yeah, he owns about 18, 19 pieces of real estate throughout the county. Do you think he'd be uh, good in the real estate business? Excellent. Really? Not selling, buying and selling his own businesses. Right, right. Buying and selling businesses. Yeah, or real estate. Mm hmm. Not being a broke, not being an agent. <clears throat> Just being out there buying and selling, that's exciting. And I'm sure mm -hmm. it's probably something he's considering. If, you, if you're pushing <laughs> him on it, I'm sure he's actually he's, taking he's, it. He's, uh, done, he's done well. That is wonderful. Real quick about yourself, Harold. Are you originally from this area? No, I grew up in Texas, went to high school in Texas, moved to California for five years, spent 27 years in Cleveland, Ohio, and been at the beach now 22 years. Is that right? You were in Cleveland for a little more than a quarter century, right. and you've been here almost a quarter century. Well, now, I mean, we're dating you now, <laughs> Harold. That's dangerous. Wow. I enjoy being old. Yeah, yeah. Golly, that's amazing. Well, you surely don't show, show your age. You have gotten so much going on. I think the, uh, the older you get, much like my father, or a good bottle of wine, the better you get. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, you can feel that every day. Oh yes, being healthy and, and mature is great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And of course, are there, you know, when you think about uh, living on the Strand, uh, some of the changes that have occurred over the last uh, 22 years, does anything really stand out in your mind uh, since you arrived 22 years ago? Oh, there are so many changes, it's hard to pinpoint. They are basically the biggest thing happened in the 19, 1990 census becoming an urban area. Right. We started attracting the national corporations here, and with that, that attracted the people, and that was the beginning of the major expansion on mm -hmm. the Grand Stand. Mm -hmm. What brought you down here, Harold? Sunshine. 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 I like that. Had nowhere to go and looked at seeing where the best climate was and headed to Myrtle Beach. And opened a business called Sunshine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, uh, Sunshine attracted you. That's an exciting yeah. business, yeah. I was doing business brokerage at the time, and I picked that at my career a few years for that because I could do it anywhere in the country I wanted to go. Business brokerage, helping buy and sell businesses. Correct. Great. Good. Were you doing that in Cleveland? I did that approximately three years before I moved to Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. and came here and opened Coastal Business Brokers uh, in 1985. Coastal Business Brokers, 22 mm -hmm. years ago. Yes. That's fascinating. I think I saw when you were in Cleveland, you'd owned, you'd owned a furniture store. Uh, yes. I first business I bought were a furniture store, grew it to uh, seven locations. No. And then bad times hit and went into then, something else. Went yeah. into something else, went into business brokerage uh, and moved down here. Mm-hmm. What's that like, being involved in, in business brokering, Harold? That must be pretty, uh, that could be pretty uh, stressful at times. It was the best education I've ever had. It's hard to talk to business people day in and day out and at one time, I had about 50% of the business's tax returns in my files, <laughs> and knowing these, and not learn something from these people. Say that again. It's hard to be have, talk to that many people, right, and not, and not learn, learn it. Yeah, sure, both good and bad. They tell you what not to do, but more important, it's interesting to ask you know, what made their business successful, and they all have some kind of look, good advice to what made them successful. Mm -hmm. So you combine this to as a learning experience. 
What are some of those that really stick out in your mind that uh, over the course of that, I think it was a decade that you yeah. owned coastal business brokers and dealing with a lot of business owners, obviously lots of different types of business, but are any of those uh, business owners, any, anything you gleaned particularly from that really stand out in your mind or have helped you going forward? I think one of the more interesting, I went into a small rundown bar and it was packed. It was packed. Packed and talked to the owner and said, gee, what makes you so successful? He said, I never let a new customer come in here and drink alone. He said, if somebody new walks in, I go over and introduce myself. I take them around the bar and introduce them to everybody in the bar. And before we get to the end of the bar, he met somebody from his hometown, somebody worked where he used to work or something. He had a friend, and he would spend the night there, come back the next night, and keep drinking. That is brilliant, Harold. So, I'm surprised more bar owners don't do that. They're probably, if they're watching right now at 7 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, they're probably either thinking about opening a bar or doing new things so, in their bar. So simple little things of this nature sometimes is the most productive thing more than other spending a lot of complicated money and things. Right. That is a brilliant idea. I'm shocked that more uh, small bar or large bar owners wouldn't do something just ever, like that. Have you ever been in a bar and sat and drank a beer and Oh and yeah, nobody ever speak by to myself, sure, and uh, sit there and wonder, who do yeah. I know or how will I ever get to know anybody? Right. But if the bar owner came over and introduced me to folks, uh, opened the door for just that, that is tremendous. Anything else that you remember that really stands out in your mind? Well, actually, I prefer in general to look at the larger companies. Uh huh. They have one that refined systems and done things. Mm hmm. I looked at Walmart for our business model for growing. For growing the Fortune right. Academy. Right. Mm -hmm. Walmart started in small little towns that nobody else wanted to be in. So when we started Fortune Academy, most of our locations are small little towns where we don't have no competition. Right, right. So I used their business model to grow our small company. That's brilliant. That's And, it, and it's worked, obviously. It has worked. We have gone from one instructor to 70 something instructors. Oh come on. From one location to 14 location and from market share from about 5 percent to 50 percent. Oh bull. 50 percent? Of South Carolina. You mean Fortune Academy controls 50 percent of the real estate uh, school traffic in the state of South Carolina? Yes. That's amazing Harold. And we used to say the Walmart approach. Right, the Walmart I, approach. But I, of course, you're still in large cities as well, not just small towns. I mean, you all are in Charleston and Columbia and Greenville. We, we, yeah, so is Walmart today. So is Walmart today. That's exactly <laughs> right. But you but started we, out in Myrtle Beach. Myrtle sure. Beach, and we got to small communities, and then we went to the large communities. That is exciting, Harold. I look at uh, McDonald's as my product people to look at. I've yet to find anybody that would tell me that McDonald's has the best hamburger they've ever ate. <laughs> However, McDonald's sells more hamburgers than anybody else. For one reason, they have a consistent product. People go there, they know what they're getting, right. they know what they expect. Right. So consistency in your product is majorly important in any business. Consistency in your product is critical. That's a very good point. Those are great. Uh, I hope folks are tuning in right now. If a viewer needs to get off to work now or get family off to school, what's the best phone number uh, for someone to call to learn more about the Fortune Academy, or do you all have a website? The website is fortuneacademy.com. Phone okay. number is 839-1131. Okay, that's the 843-839-1131. And, of course, you've got real estate academies, real estate schools, and you all teach a lot more. But in our viewership in the PD, probably not in southeastern North Carolina, y'all are confined at least right now to the state of South Carolina. Correct. Right, right, right. So Fortune Academy, yeah. these 14 locations, but Florence Darlington Tech has got a yes. big presence. Of course, you've got a partnership with Ori Georgetown Tech. We're located right next door here to the Coastal Workforce mm -hmm. Center. And uh, You call any of the uh, tech colleges in the area, and they can register you. Is that right? Any of the technical schools can register? Right, yeah. That is fantastic. Students we, for classes at Fortune Academy. We, we service 13 of the 16 technical colleges in the state. Is that right, Harold? What a tremendous partnership. Where is that 14th location that's not associated right. with the technical college? Six, three location. Columbia, uh, Spartanburg, and, and one they, other. 
in Denmark. In Denmark, okay, okay. That is amazing. That is amazing. Oh, I was thinking about what is that one? If you have 14 locations, you have one that's not associated with the one, technical school. One that's not in the technical college. Right, right. Well, that's tremendous. Even a standalone there. And Fortune has expanded so fast. Did you actually found the business, Harold, or you purchased it? I purchased it in 1995, 12 okay. years ago. Right, 12 years ago. And Good. We, we had one location and one instructor. That is amazing. Is that instructor still with you today? Uh, unfortunately, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. But surely the... And it was the Fortune Real Estate School when you purchased it, and you all changed the name to Fortune Academy because you were teaching so many other, uh, uh, so many other components there. What are some of the courses that are taught at the Fortune Academy? We teach real estate, all phases of it, from beginning to personal development, uh, home inspection, appraisal, insurance, some legal CE. I believe that's all of them. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, and of course, y'all are. We're looking forward to talking more about the uh, personal coaching program, the coaching program that y'all are kicking off, or just kicked off this past September. A lot's going to go into that. But uh, real, do you have family here in the area, Harold? I have a son here, and two grand, two granddaughters. Two granddaughters here in the Myrtle Beach area. Right. That's great. I think you mentioned your daughters there in Asheville. Mm -hmm. You've got two more grandchildren there and two in Cleveland. Two in Cleveland. That's amazing, all spread out. Do you get up to Asheville or to Cleveland much to see them? I was at Asheville last weekend. Is that right? How exciting. I'll be up to Cleveland probably in July. Good. Hopefully, I assume everyone wants to come down to the beach to visit y'all. End of July, we got two condos and everybody's coming for a whole week. Is that right, coming down to Myrtle to see y'all? Yeah. That is fantastic. Share with viewers what to prompted you all to kick off or Fortune to kick off the personal coaching program back in September and, and what, the, what, that's, uh, what the plans are and how that is being implemented. I think we need to backtrack just a moment to get okay. to that, Greg. Good, it's, sure. Uh, eight years ago, we hired Tom Mazur to, with tremendous background to help us develop a personal background. Because most of the real estate schools throughout the country are pre licensing schools primarily and continuing education, which is state mandated. Okay. And it's been very difficult to find a program that the agents would come through that was not state mandated. Uh huh. So we've been working for eight years to trying to find that program. And you find, and Tom Mazur, and who's find the out that uh, yes, uh, you've got basically three forms of education. One is mentoring. Mm -hmm. And typically mentoring haven't worked because the good agents may not be good trainers. Good agents may not be good trainers. So right. the good agents that are mentoring uh, newbies. May, may or may not be good trainers. May or may not, right. Uh, you got the educational where you put uh, people in the classroom and tell them all the possibilities and all the great things they can do and what, how they can make money and everything else. And as soon as they get out in the real world, about a week later, they forgot everything you told them, but mm. it doesn't work in the real world as it does in the classroom. Yes, good so point. So we found that in real estate that at least 80% of the business is done by 20% of the agents with a tremendous turnover in agency, which uh, we had to come up with some program that take care of those 80% that was not producing up well enough to stay in the business. Mm -hmm. So we've been working for eight years on trying to get the right personal program for those. Right, right. And coaching, we started two years ago working on because coaching is the only program out there that is focused on the agent yourself. Mm -hmm. We developed a business plan or career plan that fits that agent. So help and sit down. We do all the different things they can do and get a career plan that fits that agent. Once we have the career plan set up, we sit down and quantitate that by activities that need to be met, mm -hmm. break those annual activities down to weekly activities. We've set up a interactive website where the agent can go down and post his activity weekly. His manager gets to see what he's doing every week, and the coach gets to see what they're doing. That's tremendous. So when the coach starts to coaching and seeing the activities start prompting, helping to fulfill his activities, see that you get the results of it. 
Once we're getting the results and they are performing the first stage, we watch them and see if the second stage they are getting the results they want from the doing the first stage. Mm -hmm. If they're not getting the results they are expecting, we then coach them in how to get the better results in that stage. And each stage along the process of learning and, and from listing a business to selling it, we make sure that they're getting their national average or better or productivity in each stage. That's tremendous. Because if you, if you miss one stage, you, you're not going to be able to get to the next. You'll never get past that. Right, right, right. So, and after approximately six months of coaching, we got enough history as to where the activity is coming from, what generates activity the things that are not generating uh, results, and we can now revise and readjust their career plan to make them more focused to more productive. That is tremendous, Harold. Uh, it has uh, been what accepting. Our biggest problem today is training enough coaches. Training enough coaches? Coaches. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a very exciting. The other thing that is very exciting about this is that the pre-lasting and things is pretty well confined by state borders. Right. The coaching is going to become a very national program. You can go national or anywhere, worldwide, yeah. Any, any, anywhere, so it's very, very exciting today. That is tremendous. Uh, Fortune Academy is obviously going to be expanding beyond the 14 locations, uh, but you can have your coaches anywhere and they can go through the program uh, to become a coach. Uh, coaching are going to be home-based. We don't need no facilities. You don't need offices for that. No offices, no. So they will go to the real estate offices and... Uh, no. Telephone and Internet. Mm. Email and telephone. My Lord, well, you're really going to need a strong website or some component there to be able to help track. You've already yeah. created that, though. We have that created in place. That is fantastic, so, Carol. What spurned this? What were you seeing in the marketplace that wasn't happening? Of course, you highlighted the mentoring not working. Bedroom, you highlighted the classroom instruction no, not, not working. working. Well, again, you start looking at the larger corporations. You look at people like Tiger Woods, the best golfer we have. How many coaches does Tiger have? I think yes. four or five. Is that right? Uh, listening to Oprah Winter, which has uh, been a tremendous success, she has six coaches. Has she really? I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you look at these people that the larger successful, much more successful than we are, uh, see the things that are happening to them and take those things and bring them back down to your level and learn how to use them. Boy, Harold, you are such a thinker there, but of course you're really not. You're just taking advantage of great ideas, whether it's Walmart, McDonald's, you, Oprah Winfrey, or uh, Tiger Woods. You, you look at these people, see what makes them successful, and emulate them the best you can. Take their good uh, practices and apply them to right. yourself. Which Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Much like people are now taking your good practices and applying it to their lives. Right. That it's must a, be a little uh, t difficult at times, Harold, knowing that a lot of people are following stuff that you've put into play. Can that be, uh, uh, what's the word for that? Can that be a little scary that a lot of people are out there taking, uh, taking no. your ideas and running with them? I'll be happy to give them to them. That's wonderful. Of course, in addition, we want to highlight your service with SCORE. Mm -hmm. You've been tremendously active with SCORE and, and helping that organization uh, revitalize itself, their presence here. And, of course, Bob Garoski was with us recently at Carolina Trust Federal Credit Union. John Bonsignor was with us and not too long ago. Dick Pollock uh, Pollitt was with us. Uh, a lot going on with SCORE in this area. It's been very rewarding to have a small part of it. We have a tremendous group of great ex-executives that have been in these big corporations that got right. great ideas. So to be able to work with these people and be a part of it is fantastic. Mm -hmm. The part I'm focusing on most in SCORE is developing an educational program where right now we have nine courses on how to run a business, start a business, and business planning, marketing, and things to make business successful. And I see this where my strength is from the educational side is to set up and work with the educational part of it, mm -hmm. as well as well as counseling the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that has uh, there's there's a program that's already in place, and that's These the mbscore.org. If someone wanted to yeah, learn more, right. they can go to mbscore.org, and of course, a very active group there. We have twenty-something counselors. All of them are excellent. 
Now, in that instance, so that is an instance where mentoring can actually work pretty well at some level in the right. score environment. Is that a for, that's a form of advanced no. mentoring, right? Isn't it or no. no? It's not. Mentoring is primarily is coming in what I relate to on the job training. Okay. That's watching me doing what I'm doing, and try to emulate it. Right. So that's mentoring. As we are again, we are counseling and score. We are not allowed actually to do the work. We cannot consult when we go in and do a survey or do something. We strictly counseling it in order to let them do the work and get right. and and good counseling basically is not telling people what to do. It's drawing their ideas out and helping them refine their ideas. Mm -hmm. So when we get through with it, same as coaching or counseling, the program that we come up with is the other person's program not right. our program that's excellent so through a series of questioning and working with them we what would stop your program from working so make them stop and think of it what's the greatest point of your program and just keep asking questions over and over till we get the results we want and you have a series of questions Harold the score provides a series of questions or is it principally from the advisor from each of the advisors each who come from their own each advisor to bring his own background right in. right Right. So there's not just a, a standard list of no. questions no. that uh, you all utilize. And we try to match people up with some, uh, some knowledge of the industry in which you're counseling in, if possible. That's wonderful. Boy, that Bob Garoski, he really uh, he, he gleaned a lot of great information from his own business, where he was oh, working yeah. with somebody, and then he was able to buy in and buy out and expand uh, that company up in Delaware. Oh, yeah. Bob made my little business look small. <laughs> <laughs> made Fortune Academy? I don't yeah, like, believe it. Like, uh, Bob had some like a hundred and something employees when he sold out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, we're so. excited to get some of those tremendous retirees to the area. Of course, yeah. you wouldn't think of Bob as a retiree, nor many of the folks involved with SCORE. John Bonsignor, I believe, is involved with yes. you all. Well, uh, actually, some of these retirees, are, we're t t retiring earlier. Some of them are, and much more active than you normally would think of a retiree. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the Grand Strand here, we have some of the b brightest people moving to the Grand, Grand Strand here right. and learn to take advantage of them is a fantastic tool. They make me look up to them and, and marvel at their abilities. Mm. Do you, it, it can be difficult at times though, Harold, I'm sure either in SCORE or in the environment, to the Fortune Academy environment, because oftentimes it's difficult for folks to get off uh, or, or veer off from their their environment they've been working under for a long time to take a a risk let's say that can be difficult for folks isn't it you see that uh, very difficult times uh, and we hold the tremendous responsibility because we're made, playing a major part in these people's life as they developing and looking to go into a new career mm -hmm. and how we treat them how we respect them and how, what we do with them can change many many people's life either good or bad that's a very good point that's a very good point because it's not only that small business owner that you're dealing with but all the persons that to work with him or her mm -hmm. and their uh, and their environments I remember some of the folks it was Chris Scodras I believe who came in to the studio there the Herald offices uh, talking about eggs up grill and obviously it's expanded a good bit uh, there mm -hmm. to Surfside from the south end further south and somebody from a, a, a woman and her husband who came in from a small business it was great to see the involvement you all have had in their lives oh yeah it's it's helping somebody to avoid the mistakes that I made when I was younger is to me is a very enjoyable thing to do I bet it is Harold if if someone was to ask you your your uh, eventual goals do you have goals for the coaching program and the desire for it to expand are there some goals you've got in play uh, other things you want to launch in the near term uh, the coaching program is so dynamic dynamic and so broad that uh, it's it's unlimited uh, it will be in five years it will be three or four times the size of what we currently have today is that right in yeah. five years the coaching program or Fortune Academy the coaching program will be at least four to five times the size Fortune Academy is today. Oh, come on. No, it's that serious. Wow. Those are great words. We, we love the opportunity to get you in on the ground floor. Thank you, Harold. Great being with you this morning. It's great to be here. Thank Absolutely. You. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with the chairman of the board of Fortune Academy, Harold Swan.
going to be so easy for Harold to take all the credit for this. He's the one who stepped out, stepped out on a limb back in 95 to purchase the Fortune Real Estate School. He's the one that went out there and, and took that risk. But you hear him talking early on, Tom Mazur, Tom Mazur. You hear him talking about taking other folks' great ideas, whether it's out in Bentonville, Arkansas, when he talks about um, Walmart, or up there in Illinois when he talks about McDonald's, or folks like Oprah Winfrey or Tiger Woods. He's taking their great plans, their great vision, and what did they do? They went out and got coaches, or they went out and planned and looked in small communities and decided to expand in co small communities, or had, you heard him talk about that key word, consistency. Consistency. They're doing it the same way at Fortune Academy with the 70 plus instructors statewide, the 14 locations. And you heard him talk about it. He's breaking it on Carolina people within five years. The Fortune Academy, thanks to its tremendous coaching program, this personal coaching program, will be up to five times larger than it is these days. We won't even tell you what those numbers are. Just know it's, it's expanding daily. It's expanding thanks to folks not only like Harold but all the instructors, the amazing coaches they're going to team up with, and Tom Mazur and so many others making it happen. Give them a call at 843-839-1131 or go online to fortuneacademy.com to learn more. That's fortuneacademy.com.